Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a CMake project that integrates Qt and BTK that gets executed using Visual Studio. And so we will start by installing Qt and CMake, then we will build BTK from source. Then we'll create a project that uses Qt and BTK. We'll create a form where if you click on a button, it'll render a sphere on the screen using the BTK classes. Uh, with that being said, this is not a tutorial on how to use Qt or VTK or CMake. Uh, although I will describe the things that we're doing, I will not go in very much depth trying to teach what uh, each of those things mean per se. This is also not a programming tutorial, uh, but you will learn how to use both of these libraries together in, in your own custom-made project. Uh, we're also uh, tailoring this pr uh, tutorial towards Windows but it was also functional in Unix, and I will point out some differences as we go through the tutorial uh, as to what you have to do different for Unix. Uh, so let's just get started. So we're going to go and download Qt. So I'm gonna go to Qt download here on Google. Uh, I will also have the links to all the downloads in the description. We'll go to uh, open source, and we'll come down here all the way to the very bottom where it says download the Qt online installer. Then we'll come down, we'll hit download. I'm using Windows. Then we wait for a little bit. Now I'm going to create here on my desktop a new folder. I'm going to call it Qt VTK Tutorial. So I'm going to open it, save, and I'm going to go to that folder. Uh, minimize this. Now in here, I'm going to double click the installer. I'm going to hit next. You have to create an account. So go ahead and create an account here. Uh, you can also create an account by going to the website and clicking here. Uh, but just, just do it here on the form and accept the terms. I already have an account, so I'm just going to hit next, which logs me in and makes sure that my license and everything is fine. This is for the open source, so it's free. Then you uh, accept the QT obligations, accept the license, etc. Hit next. This is going to look up all the code that's necessary. Uh, this should not take long, but it'll take about a minute or so. Once it has been completed, you'll come to the screen. Uh, you can select whether you want to help with sending anonymous information or not. That's up to you. I'm going to hit help, the matter. Then you will select the installation folder where you want Qt to be installed. This is up to you. There's no constraints or anything. Uh, the default is the C drive Qt. I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, and then we're going to choose the version of Qt. I'm going to go ahead with the latest, uh, which is 5.14 as the time of this recording. Then I want you to um, collapse this, and I would show you would see here that there's different installation versions that, that can be installed. I will be using Visual Studio 2017 64-bit. So I do not need 2017 32-bit. I do not need 2015 or WebAssembly or Ming or UWP or Android. I will leave the sources because I like to have them just in case. So I'm just going to leave these two. You can leave them all on. It doesn't hurt. It just takes longer to install. Then uh, these are the other Qt stuff. If you want to install them or not, it's up to you. I'm going to leave them on. If you need to uh, install a previous version of Qt that is not here, hit archive, hit filter, and it'll bring you the other versions, and you can select the one that you like. Then you will hit next. Uh, you'll accept the terms. You hit next, next, and you hit install. I will not hit install because I already did that, so I'm going to hit cancel. For you, this process will take a, quite a while, so what I suggest is to take a break, go drink some water, uh, put pause on the video, and I'll be here for you to um, continue once you're done. Once this is over, we're going to download CMake. So we're going back to Google, CMake. Here's the CMake download. And then here, uh, I'm using 64-bit Windows, so I will hit download. And again, QTVTK tutorial, save it. Wait for it to show up. Here it is. I run it. And then I give it a second. This should not take long. I hope so. Okay. So I'm going to hit next. It's just regular standard. You do not need to head to the path. You can. It doesn't hurt. But, you know, it's up to you. So hit next and then we hit uh, next and then install. I will not install it because I already have it installed. So now I'm gonna take a break to show you uh, just the installation. So for me, I have it installed on a separate drive, the D drive called programs. Here I have Qt. So Qt, we installed version 5.14. 
and I have Visual Studio 2017 64. Uh, so here I have the code for this version. So what we need to do is we need to add the bin directory and the lib directory to our path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the start menu and I'm going to enter uh, type environment and you'll have the option for edit the system environment variables. Then you hit environment variables. And then down here, we're going on the system variables, we're going to create a new variable. You can also do this for user, but I prefer to do it for the system. So it's, 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 every, it's always available. So here, uh, you will hit new and you will type qt dir. That's the name of the variable. And then in the variable value, you will come here and copy this, which is again installation path, the version, and the version, and then the, the the platform that you're using with Qt. So Visual Studio 2017 64-bit, and then you hit paste here, and you hit OK. I will not hit OK because I already have it here, so it should look it should look like this. Once you have that, we're going to scroll back up to the path. We'll hit edit, and we need to add, like I said, the bin and the lib. So you will add two new entries, two new entries that look just like the ones I just highlighted, which is percent qtd or percent slash bin, and then one more for lib. And then once you have those two added, you're going to hit OK. I'm not going to hit OK because I already have them and I don't want to do any changes, so I hit cancel. Then you hit OK. Then you hit OK. This makes ensure that Qt, uh, all the, the libraries are available, and CMake will be able to find Qt without any issue and so and such. So the next thing is now that we have CMake and we have Qt, everything ready, we're going to download BTK. So back in Google, we're going to search BTK. Here's the download page. And we're going to download the latest, which is 8.2 as the recording of this video. We'll download the zip. We'll download it in the same folder. And I'm going to go back to my folder, which is in desktop here. Wait for it, for it to finish. Hopefully, not long. Come on, Chrome, cooperate. There you go. So uh, you can hit uh, here and then do extract all. I have 7-zip. I like to use 7-zip. I think it does quicks faster, but you can just hit extract all. I'm going to use 7-zip and say extract here. Uh, this should not take a very long time. Uh, I believe if you uncompress using the Windows functionalities, they do take a little longer than usual. 7-zip uh, is pretty fast uh, in comparison. So I'm just, yeah. Once this is done, this one is done, there you go. In here, you have all the code for VTK. So I'm going to create a new folder. And this folder is where I will have my build. Basically, this is where we're going to compile VTK to. You don't have to do it here, but I like to do it here. So create a new folder and call it build. And minimize this to get it out of the way. So now once we're here, we're going to need to open up, let me make this smaller. We're going to open up CMake. So I will open up CMake here. And in CMake, I'm going to copy this path. So control C, paste. And then at the bottom, I will do the same. And I'm going to do slash build which is the, the, the directory that we just created and selected. Then I will hit configure. Uh, once I hit configure, I'm going to select the version that I want. So I want uh, Visual Studio 15 2017, and I want 64-bit. Now, if you are using Unix, uh, you will want to come down here and select Unix Mix file. So this is for any Linux system, including Mac. Uh, you can select Unix make, make files, and that's how you will build BTK on your on your platform. In this case, we're using 2017 Visual Studio 64-bit. You hit finish, and it will start to find everything that it needs. Let it go. It'll take a few minutes, so take a break. Go drink more water. Put pause on the video. I'll be here, and once it's done, we'll continue. This whole process has been complete. We need to add Qt to the to the BTK build. So here you have an option that says VTK Group QT. You select it, and then you hit Configure. And it'll do it again, but it will not take as long as the first time, as it's just looking for QT in your system and adding it. Because we added QT to the path, we do not, it automatically finds it. We don't have to do anything for it. However, in the, in the case that it doesn't find it, you need to add the path to where you installed it. So where I had installed it was the D drive, QT, then we install the version, then 
Microsoft Visual Studio 2017 64-bit, the leave, the library folder, CMake, Qt5. So if I show you, if I go to programs, then I go to Qt, 514, the Visual Studio version, live, CMake, and here you find all the CMakes uh, so that so that this thing is able to link them properly. So again, this is Qt5, so let's see here it is. I can just copy this directory here. Same thing for the other plugins. In this case, it finds them automatically. You shouldn't need to do this. In Unix, uh, it should also be able to find it automatically, uh, but you don't have to add them to path, but Unix tends to be a little bit smarter with this thing. Once you have this, uh, let me just make sure to configure again just to make sure everything's fine. The last thing I want to show you is that we installed Qt in the in in this case I installed it on my programs directory, but you installed it somewhere. You might you might also want to install VTK somewhere. So here in, in my same directory, I'm going to create a VTK folder where I will install the VTK code, the the build code, the libraries and the headers. So this is how it's going to look. This is a spoiler. This is how it's going to look once VTK has been compiled uh, right now in in a, in a few. So in order to set the directory where BTK should be installed, here on the search, you'll uh, search install, and here you'll have the CMake install prefix. It defaults to program files BTK. This is completely fine. You can put it wherever you like. Like I said, I, I like to put my programs in a separate drive, so for me, it would be here. Once you put the new, the new path, you hit configure one more time. And then, and that's it. We're ready to go. The next, let me just clear this up so we can see. And then the last thing is we just hit generate. This should also not take a very long time to do. Um, let's just give it a minute. And then that's, that's it. Now in Unix, you would build BTK using make files like normal. Uh, but we are using Visual Studio, so I just click the open project, which automatically opens Visual Studio, and I have my solution down here. Now, when we install Qt, Qt automatically gives you the release version. So we also need to select the release version on VTK. So here I have release. So I click release. Mm, wait for a moment. Make sure I'm using 64-bit, so that's, that's fine. We cannot even change it. And then on the right side, I'm going to come here, and where it says all build, I'm going to hit build. So this is going to do comp the whole compilation process. This is a very lengthy process. It takes quite a while. So um, again, take another break, go drink some water, hit pause on the video, and then I'll be here. So then once, once your build has been complete, successfully complete, then you will right click where it says install, and you will hit build. I'm not going to hit build because I already have VTK installed. But when you do build on the install target, what it does is it basically copies the library files, and it also copies the bin files and the DLLs, and it also copies the headers into this this installation directory that that you had selected. Now you have VTK installed in your machine in this directory that you selected. So I will not hit. Uh, you have to go ahead and right click install and build. I'm not going to do that because I already have it installed. Once that's complete, VTK has been successfully installed in your system. So we're going to hit X and we're going to close it. And I'm going to minimize CMake for now. And now, we, just like we did with Qt, we have to add VTK to the path. So I'm going to the Start menu again and type Environment Variables. And I'm going to hit Environment Variables one more time. And I'm going to go and create a new path. And this will be called VTK Deer. And the variable value will be this one. So I install VTK in the D drive, in D drive VTK. So I hit copy, and I hit paste, and I hit OK. I will not hit OK because, again, I already have installed. Here it is. And then we're going to add it to the path. So search the path variable. We'll hit edit. You hit new, and you will type percentage VTK deer slash bin. And you and then you have it. Now notice I already have it, so I'm not going to hit OK because I already have it. Uh, we do not need to add live. We only need the bin folder. Uh, and notice how VTK and Qt the, the naming convention is slightly different. There's really no reason you could choose a different naming convention. It's up to you. Uh, it just happens that the VTK community seems to like it this way. The Qt community likes it this way. So I just adopted both and said whatever. I'm gonna leave it like that. So once you have uh, VTK directory bin here, 
uh, you hit OK, I will hit Cancel. You hit OK, I will hit Cancel, and I will hit Close. Uh, of course, you don't need to add it to the path for Unix. Once this has been completed, uh, that's it. You have Qt and VTK ready in your system. They are integratable with each other. And so on the next video, we will go over a little project in which we use these two libraries that we just compiled, and then we'll move forward. Uh, you can click here on, on, the, on the screen for the next video, or you can also look at the video in the description below. If you like this video, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Peace.